Hello everyone. Today's lecture is on Taslima Nasreen's poem at the back of the progress. So, let's begin with the introduction to the poetess. Taslima Nasreen, who is born on August 25, 1962, Maimen Singh, East Pakistan, which is now known as Bangladesh. Bangladeshi feminist author who was forced out of her country because of her controversial writings which many Muslims felt discredited Islam. Her plight was often compared to that of Sir Salman Rushdie, author of the satanic verses. This is the Sriva Rashi. Let me show you her picture. Right. Uh, Okay, so Taslima was the daughter of a doctor. She also became a doctor working in a family planning clinic in Maimen Singh until she was reassigned to a government clinic in Dhaka in 1990. She left the National Medical Service in 1933. An author of magazine columns, poems and fictions, Nasreen began publishing her writings in 1970s. She wrote withering diatribes. Uh, against the oppression of women and the Islamic code that she felt made them virtually the chattel of the men. Her subject, subject matter became increasingly sexual and her condemnation of men was unrelenting. Her subject matter became increasingly sexual and her condemnation of men was unrelenting. Contrary to Muslim practice, she wore her hair short and smoked cigarettes and she eschewed traditional Muslim dress. Her writing and behavior enraged and offended strict Muslims and in 1992 groups of those who objected to her work attacked bookstores in Dhaka that had made her books available. In 1993, Nasreen became an international cause celebrity when a fatwa, that is a formal legal op opinion, was issued against her in a reaction to her novel Lajja, published in 1993 and translated as Shame, which depicts the persecution of a Hindu family by Muslims. She further angered conservatives in May 1994. She further in, uh, angered conservatives in May 1994 when she was quoted in the Calcutta Statesman as saying that the Quran should be revised thoroughly. This brought larger and more vociferous demonstrations, and uh, including the demand that Nasreen be put to death. A bounty was offered to anyone who would kill her. She insti insisted that her statement referred to the Sharia, the Islamic code of law, rather than the Quran itself. The outcry against her went unabated, however, and the government called her for arrest invoking a 19th century blasphemy law. After about two months in hiding, Nasreen appeared in court. She was released on bail and allowed to keep her passport. A few days later, she left the country to find sanctuary in Sweden. There, she remained in hiding while stating that when it was safe, she would return to Bangladesh to continue her battle for women's rights. Nasreen remained in exile after 1994. From Europe, she moved to India in 2004, where her presence was sharply criticized by Isla Islamists there. <coughs> in 2007, the city of Kolkata, as the Kolkata uh, was known after 2001, erupted into riots as Islamists demanded that she be forced to leave the country. Nasreen then fled to the United States. Throughout these upheavals, she continued to publish, producing an autobiography in several volumes, Amar Mebela, 1999, My Girlhood, Girlhood, also published as My Bangai Bengali Girlhood, Utal Hawa, 2002, which is which means uh, Wild Wind, and We Khandito, 2003, Divided, as well as novels and poetry. Okay. Uh, now let us move to the poem at the back of progress okay at the back of the progress as the title is indicative of the double standards of the society that what happens at the back actually happens at the back of the progress uh, 
okay um the poem the poem objectifies the condition of women in a patriarchal society which victimizes her the poet exposes the hidden face of development and the points and uh, she points out the attitude of men and their dubious standards or on morality so the double standards of the morality are exposed in the poem uh, her contention is that men's treatment of women is the same uh, in every patriarchal society be uh, it can be belong it can belong to any class the power structure is controlled by the hegemony which allows her to live only at their mercy so in this poem she gives a few examples in the beginning uh, she gives example of a high ranking person who sits in air conditioned office then uh, she moves uh, to an employee uh, who is a very sophisticated and civilized kind of person and then she talks about a bureaucrat and she talks about a man uh, who is a fourth class person who ta- keeps a lighter in his pocket and uh, get tips but ultimately the treatment towards women of all these kind of men is similar okay so let's begin the poem she says the fellow who sits in the air conditioned office is the one who in his youth raped a dozen or so young girls and at cocktail parties is strictly stricken with lust fastening his eyes on lovely's belly buttons okay so the uh, first stanza or the beginning stanza it begins with the business class a fellow who sits in the air condition office is actually the one who has raped many girls even more than a dozen she doesn't give any a particular number and a exact number but she says it can be a dozen or more girls and at cocktail parties is secretly stricken with lust okay he has to show himself at the parties as a very civilized person who is not interested in on these uh, lusty things and literary things but ultimately who is he someone who is secretly having a desire or lust in his heart fasting his eyes on lovely belly buttons and he fixed his eyes on the lovely lady's belly button the navel in five star hotels he tries to f- he tries out his different sexual tastes with a variety of women then returns home and beats his wife because of an over ironed handkerchief or shirt collar in five star hotels he tries out his different sexual tastes okay he goes to new women every day and he tries all the taste of sexuality whatever he is interested in uh, with a variety of women and then returns home and beats his wife so he had enjoyed his life at full go by going into the parties going into the five star hotels by raping young girls and when he returns home he beats his wife that is the actual face of his morality or his modernity or his so called sophisticated attitude in the parties or in five star hotels that he beats his wife over an iron handkerchief or uh, over iron handkerchief or a shirt collar means they are very trivial things very small things insignificant okay now may she moves to the uh, next category the bureaucrats in his office mr big puffs on a cigarette shuffles through files rings for his employee shouts demands tea drinks and returns to writing people's character references in the office the bureaucrat or the officers of uh, administrative class uh, they puff on the cigarette keep uh, smoking the cigarette <coughs> shuffle move, keep moving between the files and ring for employees call for their employees demands for tea drinks a tree and return to writing people's character references and begin writing giving a character certificate to various people his employee speaks in such a low voice that no one would ever suspect how at home he also raises his voice okay the employee who is the subordinate okay speaks in such a low voice that no one can suspect and no one can even think that how at home he this man can also raise his voice is wild to family is dangerous to the family but with his buddies on the porch 
or at a movie indulges in loud harangues on politics but with the friends or in the movies or in get social gatherings he gives loud harangues loud uh, speeches over politics art literature and how some female his mother grandmother great grandmother committed society suicide so he uh, gives lecture that how ladies commit suicide because of the things wrong things happen to them and how he speaks over politics literature art and so many things but ultimately what is he let's see in the next stanza bidding good bye to his buddies he returns home beats his wife over a bar of soap or the baby is pneumonia but this man this subordinate this employee also who seems very timid and very sophisticated and very cultured very civilized very well behaved when he talks about art literature and the role of female in the society he also when he returns to home beats his wife over a bar of soap and over the baby's pneumonia okay so next day at work he pleasantly brings the tree now the fourth next category the fourth class at work he pleasantly brings the tree keeps the lighter in his pocket receives a tip of a couple of taka okay taka is the bangladeshi currency so next day at work he pleasantly brings the tea he is happy when he brings the tea he keeps the lighter in the pocket so that he can receive tips uh, from the other uh, from the uh, masters and tells no one that he divorced his first wife for her sterility his second for giving birth to a daughter his third for not bringing sufficient dowry and now with wife number 4 he again has someone to beat over a green chili or a handful of rice so uh, next uh, this man who seems very pleasant a very happy go lucky very merry kind of a person at his office how he is he is also one who has divorced his wife he is even more dangerous than the earlier classes because he has divorced his wife for the sterility because she could not produce any child and his second wife for giving birth to a daughter and third for not bringing sufficient dowry and now he has another wife the wife number 4 and he has someone to whom he can beat over a green chili or a handful of rice means very small things which can be neglected which can be ignored sometimes so this is the back of this is what happens at the back of progress although we are moving forward although the world is moving forward but how timid women are how women are still suffering so whether you go to any section of society men's treatment of women is same so the title itself is very sarcastic and the poem is again an irony or a satire or a sarcasm or the dual standards of society thank you thank you very much you can uh, ask your di- uh, doubts in the comment box thank you see you again